I'm Richard Roper, and coming up next, he's back, he's bad, and hey, there's Breaking Bad's Brian Cranston as well. It's my review of Godzilla right now. Western civilization has not been good to Godzilla. In the 1950s, we screwed up the original Japanese classic with bad dubbing, Raymond Burr, and brutal editing. Then there was the 1998 debacle, which was unbearably stupid, noisy, and pointless. But thanks to the talented English director, Gareth Edwards, this version clearly respects the thought-provoking sci-fi roots of the original. Spoiler alert! Probably the strangest thing about this Godzilla is how long it takes for the big guy to show up, and even then, how little screen time he gets. Brian Cranston plays Joe Brody. He's a scientist turned conspiracy theorist convinced a 1999 tragedy at the Japanese power plant where he worked was not an earthquake. You're lying because what's really happening is that you're hiding something out there. Joe believes it was caused by a MUTO. That would be massive unidentified terrestrial organism. Once the MUTO is unleashed and begins eating anything and everything nuclear, that's where it gets its power, we realize the MUTO isn't Godzilla. It's some sort of enormous, multi-legged, hideous creature. And guess what? It's on its way to mate with another MUTO! The arrogance of man is thinking nature is in our control, and not the other way around. Godzilla gets bogged down with some running subplots, including Joe's now grown son Ford, Aaron Taylor Johnson, who's a bomb disarmament specialist, frantically trying to figure out a way to kill the Muto while trying to find his frantically waiting for him wife, played by Elizabeth Olsen. And then finally, Godzilla makes a dramatic entrance, and let's just say he's almost worth the wait. Francisco sustains a lot of damage as Godzilla and the two Mutos intersect at the crossing of mayhem and destruction. Now, of course, the special effects are the best we've ever seen in a Godzilla movie. Edwards and his team produce consistently stunning visuals with more than a touch of Spielbergian influence at work. I still would have liked to see more of, you know, Godzilla in a movie called Godzilla, and the ending is cornier than an Iowa farm field in July. But this effort is still leaps and bounds ahead of the 1998 bomb and that terrible, dumbed-down American edition of the original Japanese classic. I give this Godzilla a B+. I'm Richard Roper. You can get all my reviews at richardroper.com and at reels.com.